From the downright silly to the absolutely sublime. We've become a nation obsessed with our motorhomes. This is our motorhome! I was right in my ear, that. The freedom to take to the road. We can gun it now. Is that what you're going to do? Well, no, I don't know. I'll get used to it. <laughs> and wake up with gorgeous views all around you. This is glorious. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Means that half a million of us are having a motorhome holiday this year. The electric blanket, my God, look at that. Hot water bottle. Oh, yes. <laughs> Including me. Ski jacket, ski pants. What, you're not going skiing? Hangers. And my wife, Suki Webster. It's a home from home, mate. So join us as we travel the country, discovering the delights of motorhoming. Ah, <gasps> there's an oven. I was not expecting an oven. Collecting top tips from the camper van as we meet. The heat should ignite the coals inside. Don't get it on my head! <laughs> and getting the must-have motorhoming gadgets road tested. Ah! That's lovely, isn't it? So buckle up. Oh, oh dear. And strap everything down. Oh, God almighty, oh. there we go again. You can't claim to have driven a motorhome until you've knocked the left-wing mirror. Ready for our ultimate motorhome adventure. <laughs> now, have you got any sense? That's your trailer for the series. Tea or coffee? Tea, I think. Okie dokie. No, coffee. I'll have a coffee. coffee. Yeah. Okay. Are you happy to do the first bit of driving, Steve? Yeah, sure. Good, good. I wrapped everything in the kitchen towel so that it didn't fall over and break, and now I've got to unwrap it. It's like Christmas every day. Being a, living with you, my darling, is like Christmas every day, I have to oh. say. You're never quite sure what you're going to get until you unwrap it. <laughs> For the second leg of our staycation this year, Suki and I have headed north to the Lake District. There we are. Oh, oh, we're going to get an old-fashioned whistle. That's nice. Keep that going. reminds me of being at my grandma's hearing a kettle whistle. And it's been raining all morning. No wonder the Lake District is full of lakes. It's quite cosy being in here, isn't it? I mean, we, it we, is. You know, we can hear the rain at the moment, but uh, it's nice and warm. Uh, do you want to see where we're going? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's, it's There's Lake Windermere there. Okay. And, uh, Coniston Water is there. Our first day starts near Kendall, crossing Lake Windermere on the ferry and finally parking up for the night on the shores of Coniston Water for some wild swimming. Tomorrow we're heading to Grasmere for a big hike up a big hill and then on to Derwent Water for some fun on the lake. So just time for a quick coffee before we pack up and hit the road. It might be a bit strong. Oh! Oh, Way! I mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, that keep us going for the rest yeah. of the week, wouldn't it? That's good, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is good. That'll wake us up. Absolutely. I think it'd, it'd, wake, it'd wake up somebody who's been dead for 15 years, I think. Yeah. You're going to be doing the first bit of driving, aren't you? Sure. Because I think what I'll do, I'll run along beside you. <laughs> right. Off we go. OK. OK, nothing seems to be wrapped in at the bank, which is good. Sun's coming out. The beginning of another adventure. Yes. It says there, this caravan and motorhome club is since 1907, so I'm rather surprised. Oh, really? But I mean, there were cars. Very few people would have had them. Whether they would have had cab been towing caravans at that time, I don't know. What I do know is that motorhoming really took off in the 1950s when people started converting Volkswagen's cheap multi-purpose van, the T1 Transporter. VW's own camper van was nicknamed the Splitty after its split windscreen and would have cost you £650. Today, this classic could easily set you back £100,000. Loved by everyone, it was affordable, cool and offered the chance to get away from it all. Which is exactly what Paul and I are doing in Millie the Motorhome. Now, what's this saying? Uh, 2.9... And nine six. Yes. Narrow road. So are we going to be able to do that? I don't know. I think I should probably... Do you want to get out and see? Because I'm not... Yeah, I think I will. You need to not stand in the road, love. OK, so keep coming. 
Can, can you go through? You're making this harder. Go through. What? You're making this harder. Go through, because I'm going to hit you otherwise. You're fine. I don't think you can make it. <laughs> well done, thank you. We've survived. Yes. Back on the road in Millie, we're heading through what's actually England's largest national park. At 912 square miles, the Lake District has 16 lakes, 197 small waters called tarns, and the fells, the country's 10 tallest mountains. Come on, Millie, you can do this hill. Uh, Millie, we... we <laughs> OK, Millie I, Dominic, Dominic Horse. Well, I'm not sure about that one now either, um, but I'm still not sure about Millie. Millie the motorhome, it's just a bit... It's a bit too... Oh, Millie the motorhome, you know, it's a bit too sweet. Can I suggest another name? Go on. Henry Travers. OK. I've got used to Millie now. <laughs> Come on, Henry, you can get up here. Go on, Henry. Come on, Millie. Henry. Come on, Millie. Henry. I think I've got the last one in. That means I'm the winner. We'll see. Every year, up to 20 million tourists visit the Lake District, many looking for outdoor pursuits, which is handy because there's a lot of outdoors. We are now in the town of Kendall. Have you ever had Kendall mint cake? Yes. Is it nice? It's basically... Just peppermint sugar. Mm. Peppermint sugar sounds lovely. I think according to this, we're, we're, we're near to where they make it. That's worth a visit, isn't it? Sure, if you want to. I thought we were going to go get the ferry first, but yeah, we can well, do Kendall first. We've just driven into it. Right, OK, I'll, uh, I'll guide you in. The only problem is that this plan heavily relies on Paul's ability to navigate from a mobile phone. Since he's never owned one, this could be an almighty challenge. It's like giving a Fitbit to a pony. So with, with, with this, with the Google and with the map, I can't possibly go wrong. Mm, cut, last cut to words. us in the middle of Aberdeen. <laughs> so <Yes>. excuse me. <laughs> um, I'd go, uh, yeah, left here, definitely. Okay. Definitely left. Take this next right coming up according to this and this. So straight down this way, yeah. Uh-oh, we've just been down this road. That's a rather needless instruction I gave you there. We're going round in circles. A survey found 25% of men would rather be lost for over half an hour than ask for directions. Luckily, I'm not 25% of men. Which way is the Kendall Mint factory, please? That's great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Finally, we're on our way. Every year, 20 million people visit the Lake District. This year, it's 20 million and two, as Suki and I are here to drink in its stunning views and eat up the local speciality. Namely, Kendall Mint Cake, which now we know where we're going, we're off to the factory that makes it. Oh, here we are, we're turning to Mint Speak Road. Ah. They obviously use every part of the mint in order to make mint, mint cake, mint speak, mint rump. Mint nose. Mint nose, do you think? Well, they use every part. Do they? <laughs> thank you for laughing. It was hardly worth it, but thank you anyway. Ooh, can I help you there? Can we get some mint cake? You can, of course. Um, I'll just bring that map for you. Pop up the steps. Thank Great. you. Thank you. We have a little shop over here. Um, we've got every kind of mint cake that we do. Wow. On our little shelves here. It's only a little display that we've got. Um, I'm Paul, by the way. This is Suki. Hi, Hi Paul. Hi, Suki. Nice to meet you. I'm Paula. Paula, Hi, hello. Paula. My husband makes the mint cake, and it's his great grandfather that started the business over 100 years ago. Mint cake has been produced in Kendall for 100 years, and it was made famous by Sir Edmund Hillary, who took it with him on the first successful climb of Mount Everest in 1953. And after a quick tour of the factory... Look at that, love. Beautiful copper pots. We hit the factory shop for some stock-taking. 
I'd like some in the tins. Oh, I'll tell you what, actually. What? Hold on. Shopping basket. Oh, yeah. Good idea. That looks nice. Right. Looks nice. Yeah. Can I use your basket? Yeah. yeah. There's vodka fudge, love. Vodka fudge. Do you know vodka? You do, do you as well. <laughs> Excellent. I'll just okay, give you that. You. Oh, Can you I'll stop looking at that? Things. Thank you very much. Um, love. You'll just have to hang on a minute now, Suki. Yeah. Jelly babies. Sherbet. Sherbet yeah, fruits. Yeah, that's, that's butter now. mints. Yeah, that's lovely. No, we can, we can get you, a bit more, you, love. Oh, is that the time? With Suki armed with enough mint cake to launch herself up Mount Everest at a speed of 90 miles per hour, I'm driving to the ferry at Lake Windermere. Kendall mint cake. You want some now? So let's try a little yeah. bit. Which one have you got there? This is the uh, brown sugar Edmund Hillary. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. That's nice. Mmm. Minty. Mmm. Sugary. We are. And sort of kindly as well. You can see where that would give you energy. Oh, yeah. Okie dokie, you want some facts? In the Lake District. It's home to England's highest peak, Scarfell. Scarfell, It's yeah. like Scarface. Yeah. It's Cumbria's answer to gangland. Scafe, scafe, Scarfell Pike. It's where the mean ganglands hang out. Right, I don't think you should have any more mint cake. I'm having mint cake and you, I'm going you, in you, for a flick knife fight. You reacted badly against it. Yeah. Going to take on the other hikers. You, you've adopted a, a pseudo American accent. <laughs> Enjoy this and many other walks in the Lakes District on your next visit. So we're not allowed to go walking this visit. Why are we allowed this fight. visit? It's the Scarfell oh, Hikers God, fight. God, dear me. You really do talk a lot of old rubbish <laughs> yeah, sometimes, don't you? <laughs> when you shook it up. Fortunately, by the time we arrive at Lake Windermere, Suki's coming down from her sugar high. Beautiful harbour there, that's lovely. Welcome to Windermere Ferry. Perfect. It turns out Lake Windermere is just called Windermere, because mere means shallow lake. At ten and a half miles long by one wide, Windermere is the largest natural lake in England. Excellent, and so more or less near the front. Oh, we're off. The Windermere Ferry connects the lake's busy east shore with the quieter west. It costs a tenner for a motorhome the size of Millie and takes ten minutes. Good. Didn't manage to take the bumper out. That's good. Mm -hmm. Keep following the road for a bit. Okay. Now, I know that we're heading for Coniston. Yes. Um, and the campsite is right on Coniston water. Is it? Well, it is so, very gorgeous. And yeah. The, uh, a bit of a tight God turn. almighty, there we go again. We've knocked that out again. You can't claim to have driven a motorhome until you've knocked the left wing mirror. Yes. I'm just aware there's a bit of a drop there on the left hand side. As I'm and into a lake, which we don't really want. There no, we don't. You've got to have your wits about you to drive these things. And despite there being two of us, it doesn't seem to be helping. Beware lambs on road. They ought to be beware of me, to be honest. It seems it's time for some tips and advice from some serious motorhomers about how to stay safe on the road. I'm Keith and this is Michelle. We've got a little tip for you, really useful tip. You never know the routes that you're traveling if you're going to encounter a low bridge. So a good idea is to have a little piece of paper with the width and the height. On the back of this, just put a bit of uh, double-sided tape, just pop it on the back of the sun visor. And then if you are coming up to a width restriction, or as Michelle said, a bridge, no more stress. Wish we'd known that this morning. Oh yes, there's the uh, campsite ahead of us. There's Lake Coniston to the left of us. In the Lake District, wild camping isn't allowed without permission from the landowner. It does, however, boast 204 welcoming motorhome campsites, from larger sites with every amenity to this one, Coniston Hall Camping, which is more at one with nature. We need to, uh, I suppose, make a decision about where we're going to stop. Yeah. A nice view of the lake would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, look at that, love. Yes, That's silver machine. That's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, with a motorbike on the back. I've not seen that before. That's no. great, isn't it? Shall we have a... Yeah. Shall we have a little Pass. chat? Hiya, we're your neighbours. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> hello. Couldn't help right. admiring your vehicle. It's beautiful. Matt and Lamara. Matt and Lamara, nice hello. Lamara. Hello. Lamara. Oh, this looks rather spectacular, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't when we got it. It's, I was going to say, it's changed a lot. Oh, yeah. so when did you get Absolutely. it? Absolutely. We got it in August. Um, last year, I thought, we'll take on a small project. <laughs> a <laughs> so I thought I'd project. find the biggest one we could Absolutely. get. Absolutely. I expect it gets a lot of attention from people. It does, people Absolutely. kind of honking on the, on the motorway and that kind of thing. This particular motorhome was made in 1979, and it was the first model to have the Airstream name on it. Forty years later, when Matt and Lamara picked it up for £40,000, it was in a pretty sorry state. Oh, oh this is lovely. Oh, this is very great. nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I kind of wish you could see it before, because it was 70s kind of beige oh, was... uh, interior, really. Yes. It was a terrible decision. <laughs> yeah, um, it really was. Everything it was, not was suitable. kind of... We, 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 had literally had a conversation saying we need to forget about this airstream. Mm -hmm. It needed lots of work. So yeah. everything was pointing towards don't buy don't this vehicle. Do it, don't yes. do it, don't do it. And yes. then about five minutes later I was saying, this airstream you've got for sale. <laughs> <laughs> when can we, when can we come back? Is it difficult to drive this? It can be at times. I mean, the brakes don't inspire confidence. Uh, <laughs> now we can do is that. We've clattered them a couple of times now. Is that sort of kind of normal? Mm. I think if we get within um, wing mirror range of another vehicle we're having an accident already. And Somewhere presumably that you don't have power steering because that's what really we, helps with that. We do. Power steering but it's it's what the idea of power steering was in 1970. Right. Uh -huh. I think the only thing you've got to be particularly careful with is it's the overhang behind the, the rear yeah. wheel. Yeah. So when you're turning around a corner it, you've got to just be mindful that you've got your bed at the back. Should we have a look? Yeah, oh, yeah go that's, for that's, it. Let's go back there. I saw the panoramic windows and I thought we have to have Yes. The bedroom. Yeah. Yes. I think it's my favourite part of the vehicle. Yeah. Pull the curtains back and get your yes. morning view. The view, yeah. You just reverse That's it into great. a view. Based on the fact that we've just come to the end of a lot of hard work, especially mm. on the outside, um, I can just think of pain at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at these vehicles, it's no surprise that the Airstream was originally designed by an airplane engineer. Launched in California in 1936 as a travel trailer, or caravan, the rounded, aerodynamic shape and riveted aluminium shell have gone on to become an iconic design. Not least because in 1969, NASA converted one into a quarantine facility for the first men on the moon. The aluminium shell means that they're pretty tough, so quite a lot of them have survived. There are now specialist companies here in Britain taking tired old models and fitting them out to your personal spec, like these ones done by Pete. OK, this is a 69 Caravel, 19 foot long, but we've managed to fit aircon, heating, hot water, oven. It's important that obviously whatever we do is authentic so that it's, it's done to the same quality as the original build, but once it gets to the interior, Everyone is different, and that's the whole idea, really, is that they're created according to the personality of their owner. Who doesn't love giraffe patterned flooring? If you were a giraffe, it would remind you of your mum. We take this, this completely apart. We'll lift the shell, strip out the floor, um, look at what the chassis is like, rebuild it if necessary, and finally then we put the missing skin back in, the insulation, all that sort of stuff, wiring and rebuild all these windows and fittings and so forth. Converting them from a shell takes around four months. Prices start at £80,000, but what you end up with is something truly unique. Seeing them drive off is really nice, but they are something I do get very attached to. That's why I've got 12 here. <laughs> Raining quite a lot last night, and you hear the rain on the roof. Um, so a little bit of sort of broken sleep. Uh, Which means taking things nice and leisurely for a bit. To your coffee, then. I think I'll probably have a coffee if that's all right. I don't know if this whistles, because it's certainly steaming enough. 
It's definitely really steaming, so... Oh, there we are. Oh. There's your whistle. See, as soon as I get up, it's sorted. sort it out, you see. Any, any problems like that, just let me know, I'll just stand up and it's sorted. After we've had breakfast, we're fully fortified for my first planned activity of the day, a dip in the lake. Lovely. Okay. Show the door, shall I? A bit like motorhoming, wild swimming is becoming increasingly popular. With claims it boosts the immune system, enhances your mood and reduces stress. Though I'm not sure Suki's seeing the positives yet. Are you looking forward to this? Well, that's a strong way of putting it. Isn't it, yes. Yeah. So what are, what, are your, what are your current thoughts? Well, current is a word that is coming to my head. Yes. Cold <laughs> is another word that's yes. coming to my head. Uh -huh. Wet water, dark watery grave. Yeah. There's a lot of words. How do you feel like what you're wearing? I quite like this as a look. Yeah. But the last time I wore something like this, I was at a sex party in Stepney. <laughs> I was doing the catering. Doing the catering. Doing the catering. I've never done so many frothy coffees. Now this, look at that. That's that's great, that isn't is it? That's stunning, isn't it? Beautiful. To fully protect her from the cold, Suki elegantly puts on an extra layer. <laughs> oh my stars! Oh, I can't get. <laughs> <Come right up. laughs> oh, there you are. That's nice. It's a nice look. Do you want to go in first while I sit back and watch? No. <laughs> right. Ready. Here we go. This is. Oh, oh, what? Oh! What? Scary oh! Get the bleak machine ready. You're gonna. It's gonna. Oh! Up. What? 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 It's, <laughs> it's cold in my boots. Cold feet, but if you want to wee, but at least that would warm me up. Oh well, that's charming, isn't it? <laughs> oh! What? It's making me nanny cold. Oh, I've got a cold nanny. Oh! <laughs> I've got a cold nanny. Now, if you've got any sense, that's your trailer for the series. It's supposed to take a few minutes before the endorphins kick in and the feeling of cold goes away. Okay, I'm going to do two breaststrokes and I'm coming out. But after that, you should start feeling the benefits. I'm not sure how many benefits Suki's going to feel. <laughs> Told you you'd have to bleep this bit. <laughs> That was the shortest wild swim in the world. Well, I feel as if I should stand out here, just to stay out here as long as possible. This is meant to be a seven minute sequence. Try swimming. It's like taking advice on central heating for a polar bear. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, well done, baby. No, the thing is that my hands are freezing. It is cold. Yeah. Well, we did it. Well, sort of. Did it. And some of us swore like a tree bear and ran out. <laughs> I wish I could say that was all river. Um, I, f I feel pride. My three seconds <laughs> worth. How can you feel, how can you feel proud of that? Well, I got in. <laughs> and you got out. I got, yeah, but I did like three half strokes. They're going to have to show that whole sequence in slow motion to make it look like you were in for more than 30 seconds. 30? That was good. Yeah, three exactly. seconds. No, yes. it was, uh, Three seconds of wild swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Still, you didn't lose your dignity. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'll see you back there. OK. Woohoo! Millie and her warm shower are just up the path, only seconds away. I'm going to try and get in the shower. OK. And I'm trying to escape from this. OK. Oh, that's sexy, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're like a swearing alien. Oh, let's that get hot. I'm not stopping in here. There's, there's adjustable uh, thing there. Oh, there we go. You got it? Yeah, uh, no, that's got cold again. I think I might have to give up for this. Well, I gave it a go. Oh, well, at least the wetsuit's clean. Now I just need to get out of it. It's not the opposite of being bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Luckily, there are lots of products on the market to help you wet yourself. I mean, shower. Hello. <laughs> to find out if they're any good, 
We've asked some serious motorhomers to put three differently priced outdoor showers through their paces. First up is the budget bottle shower at just £4.99. I'm guessing that just screws. Decent. Oh, there you go. Done. And this goes in there, maybe? Does that go in there? Attached to a standard two litre bottle. <laughs> you ready? Don't get it on my head. <laughs> and pour. <laughs> I had to do it. Oh, it. says, do not squeeze the bottle. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Any on me. So marks out of ten for the budget bottle shower. Three, two, one. Eight. Eight. Yeah, this does the job. Yeah. It's gonna be hard to break that unless you get a hole in it. You fit that in your backpack. Maybe like a six, seven? Seven. Next is the mid-range Rise Pro solar power shower bag for £18.90. Yeah, I like that one. Look at that. That one looks pretty cool. It has a 20 litre water tank. You can carry your soaps in there, look at that. Oh, and it's got a temperature thing on the back. That's the solar panel which needs three hours of direct sunlight, which is doable even for a British summer. Oh, it's going to be a cold shower. Have fun with that. Oh, it's leaking a little bit though. Is it already? It's not a good sign, is it? Could get ripped. How? Anyhow. Big bear. <laughs> in the woods. Get your backpack. Mate, that's freezing cold. Is it? <laughs> the pressure's all right though. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. And the scores are in. Good, yeah. Nine. Yeah. Nice eight. Eight. The last is the Vida XL Solar Shower 20 litre. You look like you're struggling. It's just not very, uh, I wouldn't say it's camper friendly. Recommended retail price of £168.99. <laughs> This one's base needs filling with water from a hose. It's very leaky. Mate, that is freezing. <laughs> Good ones is going. It's OK. But look at the comparison to that. Mate, that one's better. This one's and green hot. And the final score is... If you rocked up to a campsite with this, everyone would want to use it. One. Six. Three. Like a six. Solar shower. Yeah, that's definitely the winner. It's definitely I the one. I like that one. I do like the water bottle one though. It's all, all right. Around, yeah. Scores. Depends, doesn't it? Meanwhile, back at the lakes. Why oh, is this not working? Something on the steering <laughs> wheel? Um, the only phone. thing that's it's stopping us getting going is we can't get going. Kind of moving the wheel as you turn the ignition. Oh! Blimey, it's still saying warning low fuel. That's all right, there's a garage not far. OK. Today we're heading towards more of the kind of outdoor adventures the Lake District is famous for. Our travel plan is fell walking, i.e. hiking up a mountain, followed by water sports at Durbant Water. I think there's a garage coming up and I think we need diesel. Yeah, definitely. OK. okay. Uh, I'd do it myself, but I'm a famous person, I'd be mobbed. You reckon that's going to happen here, do you? Oh, totally. Why do you think people come to the Lake District? Sit there and behave. I'll sit here and behave. That's the best place for me. Yeah? I need help. Oh, OK. Come in. I can't get the key in the diesel. Let's see if you can do it. Oh, that was so simple. I could have done that. Oh. Clearly, by anybody observing us getting diesel into this vehicle, would realise that we were complete novices. <laughs> Thanks a lot. See ya. I think they seem that Suki has put diesel in it, not filled it up with, I don't know, strawberry milkshake. Overpowering smell of strawberries would tell us, wouldn't it? Hello. The lady in the shop said, are you Mrs Merton? I said, well, I don't call myself that. I haven't taken his name. No. Too ashamed. <laughs> Too ashamed to be linked with me publicly. Well, you made a mistake with this programme, I'll tell you that much, if I'm in it. The world will know. The world will know. OK. Ready to go? Tally-ho. Let's hope it starts this time. <laughs> yes. 
All fueled up, our next stop is Grasmere, where I've arranged to meet a fell runner turned photographer, Steve Watts. Since the first lockdown, Steve's been sharing his love for the lakes by posting daily photos on social media. Oh, well, that sounds interesting. Yeah, he's become a bit of an internet sensation. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything, does it? I mean, if you've got a budgie that can sing like Frank Sinatra, that becomes an internet sensation. Or a cat that can do anything. Or a cat that Cats can, are very A cat popular. that can do anything. Yeah, I could wear a cat costume and just roll about the floor for an hour, and I'll be an overnight sensation. Well, actually, you probably would. You're a very beautiful woman. Oh, bless you. I think rolling around like a cat, people are like that. They like cats, they like beautiful women. And what's not to like? I wasn't exactly seeing it as that kind of video. We've arrived in Grasmere, home to William Wordsworth, where he wrote his most famous poem, I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud, 6,000 feet above sea level. Although he cut that last line. No, no wing mirrors bashed on that occasion. Yes. Oh, I think this is Steve. Hi, are you Steve? Hi, Paul. Hi, Suki. Hello. Hi, Steve. Well, nice Hi, how are you? you? Welcome to Grasmere, the jewel in England's crown. Oh, it's beautiful, it's isn't it? It's stunning. Lovely. Wordsworth described Grasmere as the loveliest spot that man hath ever found. He clearly wasn't trying to keep up with a fell runner. We just be a little bit careful on here. It can be quite slippy, so heel and toe and you won't go. So put heel down okay. and then toe. And do do your partner. Yeah, well, it's poet world now, isn't it? We're in, in Wordsworth territory. Would he have walked this trail? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Many, many times, I'm sure. Little steps. Whew. It might be little steps, but there are thousands of them. Just be careful here, guys. OK. Is there a cable car? Whew. Hmm. <laughs> oh, give me strength to get up to the top. Hey, hold on, where's mine then? Oh, I didn't come here. <laughs> <laughs> it is extraordinary. I mean, you, you travel, you, you walk for about half a minute, you look back up, you've gone 30, 40 feet higher. You look back, the view has completely changed, you can see more. I mean, it's astonishing. It is literally breathtaking, particularly when you're walking uphill. So when we come through the gate, what we're going to do is just go a little up to the left. It's not steep. Oh, look at that. We'll one. get a fantastic view here. It's wonderful. Where you'll reap your just rewards. Wow. Oh, I suppose I didn't expect to find a lake up here. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Welcome to Alcock Town. Top of the world, <laughs> Mark. How stunning is this? Oh, wow. Not an easy climb, but totally worth it. So this is February, Paul, sunrise, yeah, just yeah. coming over up the back of the town there. And I'm stood here and I just cannot believe what I'm seeing. Yes. It's very important to mental health, isn't it? Ah, absolutely. So congratulations. That's excellent. We are now officially fell walkers. It's a fantastic introduction yeah. to the Lake District, isn't it? I've, I've really got my fill now. This is good. I've got my fell fill. <laughs> and if your name was Phil, I'd be I my, know, my fell fill fill. fill. But no, you couldn't be bothered. You had to be Suki. Sorry, I got a bit temperamental then. That's mm. lovely, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah, you can see why Wordsworth wrote about all this, can't yes. you? Yes. Although, I don't think there's a lonely cloud. There's, there's a lot of cloud. Mm. It's not exactly lonely, is it? No, there's no, they've got lots of company today. Yeah. So, oh, did you see that fish? No. In the water? Wow. Should we phone news at 10? This is meant to be a nice moment for us holding hands. Yeah. You? Just have me go at me. I'm holding you, Auntie. You can keep your hands off of your mint cake. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but uh, can we make our way to the summit? Isn't this the summit? No. We'll have to jump this way. OK, all right. Whoops. The end of our Lake District adventure is fast approaching, so we're putting our foot down to cram in as much as we can. Suki's in charge today, and having taken me up a mountain pass this morning, I dread to think what she's got planned next. I think that might be just about the hardest walk I've ever done. She has. He's amazing, isn't he? Grey-haired gentleman that's still running up a mountain. I don't know if you've noticed, I happen to be a grey-haired gentleman. 
have noticed. Yeah, I suppose you have. You have to wake up to the back of your flat head every morning. The back of my flat head? You've got a flat head. I wish this had an ejector seat. <laughs> I don't care if it's mine or yours, I'd still press the button. <laughs> Just looking at your phone here, I see that uh, Steve said he's posted a photograph online. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, oh, well good. done. Good. <laughs> Uh, it's a you joined the 21st century. Yeah, reluctantly. It's called the internet, mate. It was invented a few years ago. Was it? I've, I'm waiting for it to catch on before I get involved. And it's a photograph of me and you standing on the next to a couple of rocks with a lake behind us. And it's got 79 likes. Woohoo! Yes, yeah, so I think I said I can see this, this view one comment. Shall I see if I can find that? Yeah. I don't know what do I do. Press the screen. Oh, yes, here we are. Joanna Robinson, this is nice. Joanna Robinson says perfect. No, that's a text from my friend Joey. Oh. Nothing to do with the picture. No. Well, it's useless as far as I'm concerned. After a quick trawl of that so-called useless internet, I've found the perfect activity, canoeing at Derwent Water, and I am going to love being on the water rather than in it. Excellent. Uh, what are we going to put on? So jackets, wet trousers, hat scarves are all wet on trousers. the seat. Wet trousers? Yeah, you know. Waterproof trousers. trousers. Waterproof trousers, that's, that's the one. That's the one. OK. Is that your coat? Those are mine. These are your wet trousers. Oh, right. Waterproof trousers. Waterproof trousers. OK, I'll start with those. Oi. This is exciting, isn't it? No, not really. I've put on trousers before. <laughs> OK. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to have deal with a kayak, I can't even get out of the motor home. <laughs> okay. Our guides on the water are Becky and Dan. Oh, hello. Hi. Yeah. Hello. Hi. How are you both Hi. doing? Good, oh, good. We've had uh, a good hike this yeah. morning, so yeah. I'm looking forward to this. Ready <laughs> yeah. for an adventure. We're going to have a paddler at the bow, which is the front here, mm -hmm. and a paddler at the stern. If you're the stern paddler, you tend to be slightly more in charge, so maybe... <laughs> yeah. Captain Siki. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, that might break the habit of a lifetime if we're in a canoe. Yeah. <laughs> so our journey is going to be over to St Herbert's Island. So not the first cluster of trees that you can see, but the second one oh, okay. along. Right, OK. Let's get you in Let's there. Let's get on the water. Here we go. Are we doing it all turning? You can see what I'm doing, so... Yeah. We seem to be going... Uh, there we go. Oh, we're doing, we're not doing badly here, are we? Brilliant. Everyone's dry, everyone's smiling. Yeah, everybody's smiling, yes. <laughs> <laughs> smiling and dry as opposed to wet and crying. Beatrix Potter holidayed at Derwent Water. While she was here, she sketched many of her famous characters. This is um, Beatrix Potter's school on Nutkin Island. Yes. It? yes. St Herbert's that we're going to head to in the story of Squirrel Nutkin, it's called Owl Island. So a lot of her books, particularly Peter Rabbit and the Mrs Tiggywinkle stories. Oh, I loved Mrs Tiggywinkle when I was younger. This was her inspiration for it all. Brilliant. What we're going to do is head around the northern end of the island, over that side. And we're going to land here. OK, fantastic. This little beach. Well done, my lovely. You're steering beautifully. Oh, oh thank you. Hello, thank you. Welcome to St. Oh. Herbert. Do you know what? You're going faster when you pull it than when I'm rowing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. That was good, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Take a seat. <sighs> there we go. There we are. There we go. Good. We've got some local damson gin. Oh, lovely. Who's driving after this? Oh, uh, I suppose I would. I don't really drink gin, so I suppose I'd better volunteer to Perfect. drive. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> to help them. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. The island also featured in the Swallows and Amazons films. Amazing what you discover in the middle of a lake. We also learned that Dan and Becky are motorhomers. We've had a couple now. One that only lasted a couple of years. That was a, what uh, happened? No, it the was wheel more, fell off The wheel fell off yeah. in <laughs> <laughs> We lived at home and thought we need to scrap that one and get a bigger one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we called him Winston. You see your van as a, as a masculine energy then. We do, yeah. Are you getting an impression from yours? Yeah, Suki mm. wants to call it Millie the Motorhome, which is sort of like, you know... <laughs> yeah. We might be stuck it's with stuck that. for me. It has stuck, yeah, yeah I, it has stuck. I definitely think she's a she. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, you know, dual personality. Yeah, yeah by it day could Millie, be. By night. Superhero motor van. Well, yeah. if it was a superhero, what would we call it? 
Captain Narrow Squeak. <laughs> <laughs> As you go down the country lane. That was a narrow squeak. Captain Narrow Squeak, that could fit. Captain could Narrow Squeak. Captain narrow oh, that's it. That's superseding <laughs> Millie, does it, at the moment? Or no, that's arrival. not bad. It's not bad. All right, Captain Narrow effort. Squeak. <laughs> this is going straight to my head. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 please. No, thank you. So it'll be rugby songs in a minute. Well, lovely. Thank you so much. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Now, I, I'm not being funny, Suki, but the alcoholic fumes are overpowering. <laughs> <laughs> not being personal yeah. or anything. Just, <laughs> God, is it? Well, oh, blimey, it's like paddling with a pub. <laughs> now, which way are we heading? Are we going that way? No, we need to go around this way. Keep yeah. paddling. I will. Four and twenty paddlers went out toward a lake. <laughs> They fell in the water, said, this is a mistake. <laughs> and as they swam, they said, we have no fear, because tomorrow we will be on Winderbeer. Feels slightly easier. We've got better. Yeah. We're nearing the end of our Lake District adventure, and I have to report, it has exceeded all expectations. What a stunning part of the world. On the motorhome in front, I'd say we've just about achieved the level of absolute beginners but they're slowly getting to grips with it. After a day of full-on physical exercise, it's time for some grub. It's not one of my better creations, but... Don't worry. It'll fill a hole. Uh, yeah, see, I just hope it's my mouth. OK, baby, can I pass this to you? OK, that's lovely. Oh, thank you so much. No that looks worries. good. Oh, well done for getting that going. Yeah, well, well, you know, it's one of those things I was rubbed two squirrels together. Do you think it's a bit, um, a bit wet? A bit damp. Mm. Should it's we? Less damp than the lake. Should we go back in? Sure, if okay. that's what you want to do. Yeah, I think we should. All right. <sighs> Cheers. Cheers. Do you want some of this? Yeah, if you can't finish it, I will, yeah. I'm not loving it. Oh, you know, it's a bit too plain. Hmm, I do. Thank you very much. I think it's nice. Oh. I think that's me for the, for the evening, I think. Oh, OK. I'll finish now, too. Yeah. Say the magic word. Zoological. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Good night, Sophie. No, no, Paul. Next time we head back down south to Somerset. Oh, this is stunning, isn't it? Yeah, really awesome. Yes. Try our hand at some fishing. Wow. That's your first fish. Oh, my God. Hello. No, don't put it in my face, for goodness sake. Whoa. No, 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 no. Suki reveals her need for speed. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo! <laughs> Should we go again? Let's do it. And we get some cider inside our insides. Oh, this is very good. I mean, I, I think I might have had too much already. <laughs> is it well, good, Jed? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs>